I'm not going to try and convince anybody of that. But I do believe we had a partial floor on the hog market for June, July, and August, simply on the volume of hog contracts for delivery to the packer. Now, hedging will never do that. And I will tell that 20,000 head producer, you know, you can protect your individual operation. And that's fine. Though I may be partially interested in your operation, I'm a lot more interested in the entire hog industry. How do I deliver my hogs? Your hogs will be delivered from the 1st to the 20th of the month or from the 7th to the 30th, depending on what packer you're dealing with. We require... We plead, we ask for a three or four day notice of when you're going to deliver. Now some people ask why, I want to explain it to you. Many of our producers are selling on a great yield basis. It is very important to those producers, whether they realize it or not, that those hogs be killed as fresh as possible. I do not want you to call me today to deliver contracts tomorrow and have that packer so full of hogs that he can't get your hogs in. Because the performance of those hogs does nothing but go down. Now, I don't want that to happen for you. And the way we can eliminate that is to get those hogs scheduled in plenty of time. And it won't happen. Boy, this has asked me a whole lot. How do I know what the price is going to be three, six, or ten months in the future? How can I tell you what my price should be? We have in the home office a very good idea. I think there are probably many people in this room who have been in touch uh, who can remember last April and May when we pleaded and I went so far as to beg some people to forward contract hogs at $50 and better price levels. But no one can predict a market or forecast a market 100% of the time. You can't, I can't, and no one else can. But the most important thing is if you contract yourself a profit Because you will never lose your operation if you make a profit. Now people talk to me and people still talk to me even though the Chicago Mercantile has slipped considerably. Still talk to me about a magic $50 figure. I even had a producer go so far as to tell me in May when I offered him $54.5 plant delivered uh, to Morell and Company in Sioux Falls, that he wouldn't contract his hogs for any less than 58. Didn't think there was any worth in it. Didn't think it'd ever do him any good. Didn't want to waste the time to contract unless he could get $58. There's one thing that bothers me about it. I don't know his name and I don't have his telephone number, or I'd call him. <laughs> and I would ask him how $41 tastes. Not that he didn't contract, but that he, ab he had the gall to tell me that it wasn't worth his time unless he could get 58 bucks. That's what bothered. Merle, you want to put that? I'd like to show you why that bothered me so much. This is a five-year study that has been put together and based on the interior Iowa market 
country points. Five years. Now, I want you to take note to go down the line in 1978. And finally, when you get to October, you're going to find a month where we average $50. And then we're going to jump right up and start at 1979, and we're going to find two in a row where we average $50. But you can go all the way through the rest of it. There is no more. In the last 59 months, we've had three months where we've averaged $50 on a delivery basis. There's only 35% of these months that you've averaged over $45. I want you all to look at it. Take note of it. It's very, it is vitally important to you as producers. Now, this information you don't get on a radio station. It doesn't come on TV. You don't read it in your farm magazines. But it's all available. And we just simply put it together so we could explain to our people. And I'm going to refer, and I hope you guys don't take it. I call them my producers. I call them our people. Uh, I, I hope that I'm a part of this thing with you, and I don't want you to take offense to it. But this, simp this, this thing, as you go down, I had producers uh, tell me that I was trying to sell some $47 April delivery hogs, and guys said, boy, I just can't hardly sell my hogs for $47 in April. Well, somebody did, because the last five years we've only averaged $38.20, And for five years, the average hog price, and it doesn't make any difference where you are. If you're sitting there thinking that because you're in Indiana and your price is higher, it all does simply reflect back to this. There are 27% of all the hogs in this country are marketed in Iowa. I believe that that is a setting place for the market. 42 and a half dollar average for five years. That means that any time you would have sold hogs above $42.50, you'd have been ahead of the average. Now, I doubt that there's 10, probably even 5% of the people in this room that if I'd have told this thing two, three months ago, on the street, on the farm, would ever have believed me. But I know it's true because we did dig out all the facts and figures and put them together. And that's what it is. And the only figures that are an estimate on there is a 1981 average, simply because we do not have a, a December market in for 80, 81. And I put that, I put $45 on that thing about two months ago because I thought and I told producers, I've told producers, that $45 would be more the norm in December uh, than the exception. Well, a couple weeks ago, I just revised my figures down because I don't think we'll ever average 45. I think we'll average somewhere under 43 and a half. And it's simply going to be because we're going to start out the beginning and I think we'll gradually increase. This month, I think, uh, and I'm put my head on a chopping block here, uh, I think we'll see if forward contracting actually has anything to do with, with putting an upward trend in the market. Because we as an organization have some over 200 contracts. It's a drop in the bucket, but it's a lot of contracts. And uh, you put that together with the rest of the organizations and commission firms that are taking a delivered contract, I think we got something to say about it. I know we have something to say about it. Tomorrow, I'm just coming. Tomorrow, I will put out a notebook, some paper at the hog booth. Uh, I would ask you for uh, your name, your collection point, and so forth. I am going to send this 
to every collection point. In fact, I would ask you to make a larger chart of this overlay, overhead, and put it up in your collection point. I got a collection point or two that have already done it, and it causes some results, it causes some interest, some things to happen. I don't like you to sell your hogs for $41. Not when I know we can do better. Now I want to show you what some producers did in 1981 with their production. Understand that you, this year in 1981 your average price is going to be somewhere under $44. I don't know exactly yet, but it's going to be somewhere under $44. I want you to take note that uh, producer A up here in the upper left-hand corner did, ev did everything about right. Shoot, he just, he just seemed like he always contracted hogs over $50. And we had some people that did that. But I also want you to take note of producer B and producer C. You see, you don't always have to contract hogs over $50. There are times when it is important to your operation that you may even have to minimize a loss. Now, I doubt very much if there's anyone in here that would enjoy contracting hogs for $38.20. This particular producer did not like it either. But when he started, he wanted to keep it going. And the most important part of this entire overlay is what you read at the bottom of each one of those lines. It's not what I get every month, though that has a bearing on the final result. It's not what we sell every month. It's the end of the year balance sheet, red or black. That's important. Now you take a 225 pound hog and take the lowest figure you've got on here. At $10 a head, if you produce 500 a year, you just made yourself over $5,000. Now, I do believe that that is important to every individual in here that raises hogs. In fact, I know it's important. Lastly, I'd like to uh, go over a uh, a comparison that uh, we just completed before the convention. Uh, I compared what I've done here as I've gone back and we've dug some figures out of USDA techs. Uh, they supply my figures. Nobody ever takes, uh, you never hear these on a radio either. You never see these in a uh, farm magazine because someone did not take the time to sit down and do it for you. And it is also very important There seems to be a very insignificant difference between 1980 and 1981. Only four tenths of a percent. However, when you figure out that the FIS slaughter for this 40 month test was over 65 million head of hogs, it no longer seems so insignificant. And it does compile. 261,000 plus sows that did not sell in 1981 on a comparison that it sold in 1980. Now these sows could be on vacation in the Bahamas. They may have went on a South American cruise. 
I don't happen to believe that. I do happen to believe that they are in huts and are in crates and are presently producing pigs to be marketed in 1982. You make up your mind where you think they are. We know that in 1981, the sows did not move the way they should. In fact, in relation, we show uh, if you use a 7.25 pig per liter average, uh, you're coming up with 1.9 million extra hogs. Now that's just simply a 3% increase. But agriculture isn't like agribusiness. He prices his product. You don't price yours. You cannot increase your inventory and get just a little less because they take it all. All the production will be priced lower. Not part of it. The agribusiness man can get five extra manure spreaders, price a few down, have a fire sale. But at the end of the year, he knows he can price his product so he makes a profit. And you, to this point, cannot do that. Whew. God, it gets dark in here. <laughs> Oof, <duh. coughs> but I want you to make up your own minds. Back in April and May, in the farm magazines, across the ticker tapes, and I'm going to pick on Iowa State University. They predicted or they forecasted 50 to 55 dollar hogs in the last quarter of 1981. Then as we entered this last quarter of 1981, that figure was revised. Downward, of course. And we was revised to 47 to 50 dollars. Still somewhat optimistic. Now we ain't going to average 43 and a half. Very recently, the Minnesota Farmer Magazine had a producer tell me this. I have not read this article myself. It's translated to me. I put it on paper. I have confirmed it with Gene Murrah, South Dakota State University. But between the University of Minnesota, my old alma mater, South Dakota State University, and North Dakota State University, they forecasted for 1982. Their forecast for the first quarter of 1982 is the high 50s. In the second and third quarter, our market will slip. And we will probably only average somewhere in the mid-50s. And for the last quarter, things are going to hell in a handbasket. We're going to be in the low 50s. It's not real. I called Gene Murrah and I asked him, how can you do this? Give me the information that you use to give this information to, to the farmers of this country. And he said, Larry, he says, uh, I'll tell you what, you got to read that thing. You got to have it in front of you because it does say on there that that information was put together before the September pig report. And there were some unusual things that happened and some things happened that we did not anticipate. And I asked him, why in the hell did you let it go to print? If you know it's wrong, why do you let the people read it? No answer. In fact, he referred me to the Minnesota, University of Minnesota to a fellow who I tried to call that I could not get a hold of.
Now, you all may have picked up a little that I don't have a lot of faith in our agricultural university forecasting. They are playing to an optimistic following. You. Now, Devon said last night that he is not an optimist. He's a realist. But I'll guarantee you all that to plant a crop in the spring, you must be optimistic. You are an optimistic people. You couldn't stand a farm if you weren't an optimistic people. You also got a little gambler in you, and you got to have that too. The thing that bothers me about the thing, uh, the whole thing, uh, on the forecast, if they knew it was wrong, why did they take it to you people? Why did they allow you to read a falsehood? Because I know you all want to believe it. Hell, I want to believe it. I want it to happen. I want us all to make money. Now, in April and May, I'll tell you what we talked about to the producers. Many of you know. Many of you talked to us. I told producers that in October we would be down to $45. We would be down to a level of 45 bucks. I said by December, we could be down to 42 It happened before that. Now, as I said before, we're not going to predict 100% of the time. We've got a good idea. We've got the information. And we're willing to give it to our people. That's why you belong to this thing. That's why it is important for you to use the information that we have to do better for yourself. Now, as a team, we can make it all happen. I want you to think of the home office as a tool for all of you. Because together we can do the job. Today I've given you an awful lot of statistics, an awful lot of information in a very short period of time. I do believe that it is all very, very important. It is important to you. It's important to your neighbor. And it's important to the entire hog industry. Don't be afraid to tell your neighbor that you belong to an organization with a goal and a plan to take us there. I'd like to leave you with something that has been said several different ways, but I like it very well the way Theodore Roosevelt said it, and he said it like this. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbled, or where the doer of deeds could have done better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs and comes again and again, who knows the great enthusiasms, the great devotion, and spends himself in a worthy cause, who at best knows the triumph of high achievement and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring so greatly that his place shall never be with those timid souls 
who knew neither victory nor defeat. I am very proud to be in that arena with all of you. I thank you for this opportunity. Thank you very much. I'm not too sure Larry's going to send any of his boys to South Dakota State University or not. <laughs> Larry made one projection here today. He hasn't made it to you. He just made it to me, and I'm going to either prove him right or prove him wrong, and I'm going to let you people be the critics one way or the other. Now, all you have to do as a crowd this morning is just to be honest with me when I ask you a couple of questions. I'm going to tell you Larry's prediction. I'm going to tell you the answer, and then I want you to prove Larry and myself right or wrong. And it's got some of the bases to do with what Larry's been talking about as far as volume, sow kill, et cetera, et cetera. Our prediction that the people in this room, and I'm assuming you're all hog producers, our prediction is that there are more people in this room that has increased your volume in your operation in the past six months than has decreased. So now I'm going to ask you to be honest with me. And for those people, now the people that are raising the same amount of hogs, you know, and don't intend to increase or decrease, do not raise your hands. The people that have decreased your hog operation in the last six months, I would like to see the show of hands at this time. Okay, I'm not going to count them. I predict about 15 hands went up. The people that have increased your volume in the past six months, would you raise your hands? Now I'm going to have to count them. Just hold them up there just a minute. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. All right, now the ones that had your hands up a second ago, raise yours back up. Eighteen each way. <laughs> Boy, I don't know if that proved us right or wrong. The question was, I, you know, Larry said that there was four-tenths of one percent more sows kept for breeding this year than last. The pig crop report that came out just a few weeks ago said that the sow, the breeding stock was down some five to seven percent, depending on the various months. You people tell me here there's 18 that's decreased and 18 that's increased, and that means that our four-tenths of one percent has got to be more accurate than any figures that anybody has ever put together in this country. And I proved it to you with this group of people because you're hog producers. Now, that is not a coincidence, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm saying is, and I'm just trying to back up, and this near broke even, so now we'd have to break it down in exact how many hogs and, you know, so forth and so on. But just what you said here proves to me beyond a shadow of a doubt that Larry Sills is working with the most accurate figures that any human being can put together bar none. And the people that are predicting $50 hogs in the next fiscal year, it will come true only if one thing happens and one thing happens only. And that is you as hog producers are financially put in such a crunch that there will be total liquidation sales. That's the only way. If supply and demand was going to work in that manner, it would be because of you as hog producers totally liquidating your operations. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I spend my time talking to hog producers. This man and three other people in our hog division one day, just a few weeks ago, took 396 telephone calls in one single day, and that is a pretty good day's work. And that's not including the dozens and dozens of calls that they placed out of our office. We talked to hog producers from 6.45 in the morning and a lot of times until 9 o'clock at night. I have traveled, I have no idea how many thousands of miles and talked to hundreds and thousands of hog producers in the past fiscal year. I stood on this podium one year ago this week and pleaded with the people to delve into the National Farmers Organization forward sales program. Two of the four people that you've seen on this chart did exactly what I asked them to do. They walked out of this convention and before they went home they started forward sales contracts and never left up. I'm not blaming anyone. I think it's that credibility gap that Devon Woodland was speaking about last night. I don't know how to do it except for just plain proving it to you like we just did right in front of you and now we have to continue to carry this back home. Larry is going to send out charts. You know, we're going to do everything in our power to give you the most information and, and make sure that you are the best informed people in this nation. Because if anybody in this room thinks you're going to sell $50 hogs in the next 12 months, you'll, it just won't happen. And I hope I have the opportunity of standing here next year at this very same podium and telling you, not through liquidation, but through solid programs, that sunken, you sure told us a lie last year because we are selling $50 hogs, not because of liquidation problems, but because of a solid programs that we're all participating in. I'd like to give you some predictions of, or projections of what the hog division is headed out to do in the next 12 months between this convention and your next one. Those predictions or projections are we have committed to Devon Woodland, the National Board of Directors, and I'm committing to you here today that it is our goal and our projections to increase a 10 to a 12 percent volume over the next fiscal year of what we're presently running. <clears throat> the majority of this volume will come out of our regional supervised geographical black lined areas where we have some 80 of our collection points totally uh, managed by salaried staff. We expect some 2 to 5 percent increase over the unstaffed areas. All collection points that's a part of this organization are, have been, and if not very soon will be between now and, and January 1, be involved in monthly collection point meetings which you can get the exact details in the next meeting room with our comptroller Carol Olive and Wayne Leedy, the assistant director of the hog division. If you'll just step next door in room 210, they're going to be going through the entire uh, paper form flow, your job responsibilities, and this meeting is primarily set up for the custodians of the collection point. It's set up for the collection point managers and the meet committees. Uh, they're going to be going through step by step with you in detail. That's the reason we're not covering in our meeting here this morning. Uh, it's not a closed meeting. It's for anyone that said, wants to set in and see exactly how the inner operations of the hog division and the fat cattle, feeder cattle, and grain divisions operate. Uh, some of the programs we're going to be working on extremely hard in the next year and it, of course will be the forward sales program and the blocking program, the contract block program. Uh, it started with pork peck some year and a half ago. 
We blocked together a group of hogs in the state of Ohio. We fell flat on our faces. Uh, we went into an area where it was uh, surrounded by packing plants. Uh, it was in one of the highest priced areas in the state of Ohio. And believe me, we could not pull the hogs out and move them at a price advantage to the producers. The producers did not choose to move their volume, their production with the National Farmers Organization's program. And so we've been trying many things since then. Uh, a very successful program has been developed in eastern Iowa now. We do have hogs on a contract on a formulated market well over and above the interior Iowa market. We're moving them out of a low priced area now into a higher priced area to move the overall market level in that area. It is being done. These hugs are signed on a contractual arrangements between you as producers and your organization, assuring us that the volume will be coming for the next 12 months. I think it's one of the greatest programs that's ever been developed. We want to carry it several steps farther. Another step that we're looking forward to and Larry is chomping at the bit at is to take a block of hogs, uh, maybe just a given month, any month, and block a group of hogs together and sell them on a forward sales program. We have some 200 and 225 contracts uh, that we'll be moving here in just the next few days uh, that we sold several weeks and months ago. It's going to be delivered in the month of December. But remember, and I think Larry pointed it out so clearly, but just remember your parting words here in this meeting today that the difference between forward contracting and hedging your hogs on a market. Hedging hogs on a market, playing the merc, believe you me, will never set a floor in a hog market forward contracting and actually delivering the hogs to be slaughtered will floor the market. But we have several programs and we can use them in several different ways. If you, anyone has any ideas, any suggestions, where our hog booth will be open all day tomorrow, please stop by, talk to myself, Wayne Leedy, Larry Sills, and Enjoy yourselves. I thank you very much for coming this morning. And if we can ask, answer any questions later, please feel free to ask. Thank you.